doing justin here today we are checking out fire by Jimi hendrix which is kind of on the easier side of Jimi hendrix songs but it's not without its difficulties uh we're going to take it just one chunk at a time and i'll try and give you some ideas of the techniques and the things that you want to be watching out for while you play it but it's definitely a kind of a loose tune it's something that you want to be kind of finding your own interpretation of playing it exactly like hendrix or playing anything exactly like hendrix is pretty difficult so um i'm trying to going to give you the bones and then you can go and get a bit more forensic on the tune if you want to really nail down any of the individual sections but this should give you a kind of a good starting point if you want to do some more research or if you want to make up your own version now to get the sound for this tune i'm using the front pickup on my strat type guitar i'm using a marshall profile and i'm also using a fuzz pedal for me i'm using the analog man sun face pedal um almost certainly hendrix was using a fuzz face which i actually have one of those but it's in storage right now and actually i don't think it sounds as good as the analog man it's a lot noisier old kind of girl you know um when pedals get that old sometimes they get a little bit uh, temperamental so uh, you definitely want to check out the analog man one i think is the the favorite of my fuzzers so the intro riff is using an octave effect so the real big deal with this one is making sure that you mute all of the strings that you don't want so the very first uh, shape is a, an a flat note so we're putting our first finger on the 11th fret of the fifth string and our little finger on the 13th fret of the third string and really important you want to make sure the tip of your first finger is muting that thicker string then you'll play that note the underneath of the first finger will mute the fourth string little finger will play the note on the 13th fret as I mentioned and then first finger is muting the thin thinnest two strings as well so as you play through all of them you get mute note mute note mute mute you want to be able to hit all of the strings but still get those no two notes out that you want right it's really important that it, if you don't get your muting right and you get loads of strings ringing out particularly with a lot of fuzz it gets real super messy okay so we're playing this note the a flat then the g which is one fret lower than that so first finger in the 10th fret little finger in the 12th so then we play the same shape again move it back two frets to the note f back to the g and then over a string, like up toward the ceiling, one string to the note D. And we're going to hit that one twice. Okay, so we've got this A flat, G, two, three. F, G, D, D, two. The rhythm of the riff is starting on beat four. So we have this one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, and two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, and two. Three, four, one, two, three, four, and one. Okay, I'm using all down picks all of the way through that riff. And then as we go into the verse, we have and four and one. Seventh fret on the fourth string, fifth fret on the third string, and seventh fret on the third string played twice. And that's coming on the and after three. So one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four, and one. Again, I'm using all down picks and I'm playing it quite aggressively. I want quite a kind of a snap going on. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, and one. I'm trying as well to mute all of the strings around. So as I'm hitting in, I'm really, I'm not just going. You can hear it doesn't have anywhere near the same impact. As I'm really trying, I'm using my thumb. Is I'm kind of holding the you know baseball bat style, which is the way Hendrix played with the thumb reaching over, muting the thinner two strings. So when I'm playing that first note, 
My third finger is playing the note on the fourth string. The tip of my third finger is muting the fifth string. My thumb is muting the thicker string. And my first finger is muting the thinner strings. So again, I can strum all the strings, but I'm only getting the one note. Okay, very often that last note I would play with my little finger as well. Just again, it's easier to keep fingers two, three, and one behind it, muting all of the strings up. But I use my third finger as well third finger as well, second finger there is muting strings four and three. So it's something that you want to experiment a bit as you're learning is, is how you're going to go about muting. And you, if you give it a little bit of thought at the, at the start and do it kind of consciously, after a little while it'll just happen. Like I never think about what fingers are muting, what they just do it. But there was a period where I sat down and tried to figure out how my hand would have to sit in order to get all of those notes muted. And I suspect that you'll probably have to do a, a similar kind of a thing. So. Um, just going through then from the intro into the verse. So we got this one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, and two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, and one. And that's the, what's going on all of the way through the verse. Now, there's a stop where he says, let me stand next to your fire. And in that little gap, there's quite a lot of noise going on. There's a few different things that he does, depending on what, whether you see him live or even within the track, what he's doing. A good kind of uh, uh, a generalization of what he's doing would be to put little finger on the 13th fret of the thinner string. Uh, I use my second finger generally, but you could use your third finger on the 12th fret of the se uh, third string. And I'm doing a little tone bend with that note on the third string. So 12th fret tone bend and 13th fret on the second string together. And then, which is a, an important part that we're going to learn for the rest of the riff, which is sliding up to the 12th fret with the third finger, then first finger playing the 10th fret on the fourth string, then third finger flick off back to 10th, so 12th fret to 10th fret, and then back to that uh, 12th fret on the fifth string. Sometimes letting the first finger kind of lay down flat. So we end up getting some of that 10th uh, fret on the third string as well. That note. Just rings out, you know, it's, it's more about feeling it and trying to get the get it feeling groovy rather than being too fussy about the notes. But would be the, the official correct one, I guess. But sometimes that's going to sound wicked as well. So it's really up to you to, to find out how you want to play it. So... Um, in rhythm, uh, two, three, four. Okay, and then we're into the chorus. So it's just coming at the end of the bar. So, and four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four triplets. Four E and. Three and four E and would be that riff. That, the bend could come anywhere, really, but put it on one is nice and easy. One, two, three, and four E and. Okay, that would be a nice thing to practice. You can do it nice and slowly. The count is strong, which is often with Hendrix where he's playing a little bit loosely around the beat. can be difficult to try and standardize it and find a way that makes it easier to do it. But um, one, two, three, and four. Two beats. to the chorus. Now the chorus is going D to C, but we need to do it Hendrix style. So thumb is playing the bass note, muting the fifth string, third finger on the twelfth fret, uh, second finger on the eleventh fret, first finger covering the thinnest two strings. Then little finger is going to go down on the twelfth fret of the thinnest string. Bass notes, chord, little finger down, and then off and then down to the C. And there's our little riff. I sometimes leave off third finger as well. And so I'm just really playing a triad on the bass note. 
triad still making sure everything's muted this seems to be the way John Frashani plays it with just the triad I always used to try and put that third finger down but sometimes I feel like it muddies the sound a little bit but again it's a personal choice trying to tell exactly what Hendrix was doing when he recorded it or how he played it live is difficult uh, difficult at best um, but if you've got that riff idea again one two So that C is pushed there. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, E, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, E, and one. Down, down, up, down, 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 down. <laughs> Nearly all down strokes, but again, it's trying to keep that hand moving, always playing a down strum on a down beat, but probably playing down strums on the ands and the up on the E and the A, uh, if you wanted to get all technical with it. But again, you know, trying to keep the hand feeling like it's moving is probably the easiest way to, to think about the, the what's the right strumming pattern. It's about what feels easy for you with this kind of tune. I think that's important, but as well, trying to keep it feeling natural, which usually means that the pick and hand is acting in a reasonably consistent kind of a way. Um, so that's the chorus here. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one. Like I said, this is a kind of a standardized version, right? Listen to the original recording if you want to pull out any more finer detail than that. Um, now, going from the chorus back into the verse, he does a little a fuller run up. So, seventh fret on the fourth string, then five, six, Seven. One, two, and three, and four, and one. Okay, let's go. Just going back from the chorus into the verse. After he's been through the tune again, it comes to the bridge after the chorus, uh, which is power chords D. Move over, Grover. C. Let Jimmy take over. A. And then to C. You can either play D, C, A, C, or D, C, A, C, or D, C, A, C. It doesn't really matter. I can't tell which one he's playing, to be honest. So as long as you're doing the power chords, just hit them and hold them. You can play them a little bit more if you're playing it you know, your, your own way. It doesn't matter uh, as long as you get the chords right, I guess. Um, now, the solo goes to the key of E. So the bass is moving up to the to basing around kind of walking. It's kind of jazzy style, really, on in, in the key of E, E minor. Um, and it's a really nice solo again, E minor pentatonic bass if you can and you want to have a go at working it out by yourself by ear, that's a really, really good idea. It's not a difficult solo, all E minor pentatonic. Um, if you want a bit more help than that, um, it's bending the, starting off with the third finger and the 15th fret of the second string. Okay, so the tone bend, another bend, then bend and release, and then first finger in the 12th fret of the third string. Second time, 15, uh, twice bend, then 15 regular without the bend, 12, 14th fret tone bend. Third time. Now, a little bit complicated again, that sounds like there's an overdub guitar part there. Sounds like one of them is going, um, holding the 15th fret and the other one is bending the 14th fret on the third string. Um, you can choose what it is, that, how you want to interpret that. I, I would go... and just to, you know, hold the 15th fret with one finger while I bend the other one, you know. And tr a lot of this stuff is about getting those bends so they, they get a bit gnarly, you know. That as they're coming up to the right pitch, they get a bit, especially with a bit of fuzz, they get a bit angry sounding. and. Uh, I think that's kind of what you're looking for more than the actual note. Uh, and the last time, we've got 15th fret again, then 14th fret on the third string, two bends, and finishing on the 12th fret there with a nice Jimi Hendrix style vibrato, which is, of course, one of the, the signature things uh, that you'll learn if you're playing Jimi Hendrix style, is trying to get that, particularly the first finger on the third string in that minor pet within that... 
Okay, he's got a very distinct kind of a vibrato, does Mr. Hendrix, and uh, it's definitely worth listening to and trying to emulate as best you can and trying to learn from that the way that the great masters are doing their vibrato and try and copy it. That's part of the game that we're all playing all the time. So hopefully that gives you a look at this tune. It's a really lovely tune to play along with the original recording. You don't have to muck around with retuning or anything like that. Um, and try, you know, the th important things are trying to pick up on the vibe. So trying to really get the feel of it right and be able to, particularly with this tune, play aggressively, you know, to be able to mute all of those strings so you can play quite hard and your strings kind of snap in a little bit. I think that's an important kind of part of the Hendrix experience is trying to get that, get the sound and the feeling of it. I, I think oh, it always comes back down to feeling, doesn't it? You know, with these kind of tunes, it's, it's about trying to play along with it often enough that you absorb the feel of the tune and the time of it and, and trying to get that stuff together. I think that's kind of the most important elements to try and absorb anyway. That's how I see it. So uh, look, I really hope you've enjoyed this lesson. There's plenty more Hendrix lessons over on the website. A thousand, more than a thousand free lessons. Now I can't remember how many Hendrix songs, at least five or six. Um, and uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you dig what I do, I really appreciate your support and I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.